So here we go, we're going to talk about Hymns earnings. A lot of you guys requested this earlier this week and we're going to take a look at what they did and when they reported earnings and everything like that. So hope you enjoy the video. Now, the only key word that I would use for this is unbelievable. I have never seen anything like this in the stock market. I witnessed a company bring out exceptional earnings. I mean, I, c I c couldn't even find one negative in it. Not even one little negative I could take away from the earnings. And the, as well as that, the response from the earnings, like I think even a few of the people that were like negative on the company hymns were even like, oh, I actually, we actually can't say anything negative about this earnings. It's fantastic. And the key word is unbelievable. It's unbelievable because we saw hymns put in 11 out of 10 earnings. I would have said they were even better than DraftKings earnings. They were phenomenal earnings. The best company's earnings that I've seen from earnings season, they were really good. 11 out of 10 earnings, fantastic. And then I looked at the company after hours and I saw the stock uh, start popping up 5, 10% and I thought, you know what, it probably deserves it. And then within the next few hours, when the stock, mar stock, op stock market opened up the next day, what happened? The stock lost every single part of the gain it had after the hour jump and the stock actually went down 8%. And the stock is now pushing towards 52 week lows after this earnings report. And the really crazy thing to think about is that only a few months ago, three months ago, the last thing we had from him was once again an unbelievable earnings. <laughs> we had like a, another 11 out of 10 earnings report in January time when the last reported earnings. And then three months later, we have another fantastic earnings, 11 out of 10 earnings. And the stock just puts in new 52 week lows and new 52 week lows. And you're like, this is just the stock market we're in. You know, you've got companies like this bringing out these unbelievable earnings and they just keep going down. And it is frustrating to see. However, looking at this, you know, as a, a long-term investor that actually studies the business, when you look at the business and you realize the projections, what this company is doing, profitability-wise, revenue-wise, and you just see that share price going lower and lower, you know that as long as you stay in the business here, this is one heck of an opportunity right now in the stock market. I'm generally looking at hymns and thinking this now is creating by far at least a 5x opportunity. Not even 2x. I'm not even saying that hymns is going to 2x from here. It's going to 5x from here. I, I'm actually looking at hymns and thinking 10x is looking pretty easy. The upside of this company, the valuation it's trading at, this is going to be trading at nearly under a one time sales. For a company that's got an amazing balance sheet in a massive TAM, they just put in nearly 100% revenue growth moving towards very good amounts of profitability is just insane and the only word is unbelievable to see a company like hims bring out two back-to-back -back amazing energy pot and it's just putting in new 52 clothes is just insane frustrating in the short term from a an investor from a share from a shareholder point of view at the same time i do look at it and go all this is giving me is more opportunities to buy this company at fantastic prices that's all it is so ignoring the share price fantastic earnings um, and what was the really good thing with Hims is it came after a period of time that I was actually a bit worried. I was going to Hims earnings going, you know, I've, I've got confidence in it and I think it will still do well, but there's a lot of, when you listen to what's going on there, I was like, oh, what's happening in the industry? I was a little bit worried because the first thing is, you know, when we go back to the last earnings, you know, this is Q1, but in after Q4, I looked at Q4 and I looked at them height guidance up massively in Q4 for this year. And I was like, oh, that's quite hard to beat. So what happened is in Q4, we were expecting 350 million this year. And then Q4 went, actually, we're gonna hike it up. We expect to do 365 million to 380 million this year. I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's quite a big hike up already. Uh, and I thought, you know, with all the things that are going on, can they do that? And they didn't only do that, they smashed it. And then this quarter they came out and hiked up it again. And they're now expecting 410 million to 425 million. It's fantastic. You know, in a three month period to go from a, a business that we thought we're gonna do 350 million and is now going to do potentially 410 to 425 million, unbelievably. They're, they're overachieving a huge amount. And the big worry as well, this happened I was looking at TDOC that reported earnings the week before and you looked at TDOC earnings, they were said they were struggling in a few bits and obviously we saw um, TDOC absolutely get slotted on the share price and they're obviously very much in the same sort of industry. And I was looking, and I think Good GoodRx also had a few issues. Um, so I was looking at companies in their industry going, you know, you look at them, they're struggling. These guys have just done a massive hike on the guidance. Like, 
it's going to be a little, little bit touch and go, I think, this quarter. And then they the don't just beat it, they smash it, they hike it up once again. Unbelievably delivering at the moment. So, yeah, very impressive. Um, adjusted EBITDA, staying around the same. They didn't hike this up, but they are expecting still between 30 million to 20 million in loss, which is fine because when you look at they are focused on the revenue growth, which as you can see is absolutely delivering. And the whole point of getting more and more revenue growth is that, and getting more of the TAM, is that when this company does start getting to the tipping point, um, they have more profit coming to the bottom line, which is obviously coming clearer and clearer, which we'll talk about in a second. And it's not even really losing that much money now, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, unbelievable. Uh, revenue, 94% growth. I mean, that's, you know, for a company that is at these sort of valuations at like one-time sales, 94% uh, revenue growth, it's just fantastic. Um, new mobile platform, they, so they have launched their mobile platform now. They said that the mobile platform has been massively um, taken up, uh, very good adoption. I think they said, I can't remember exactly, but I think the quote was 60% of new members join through the mobile platform now. Mobile platforms are great because obviously, um, you always have that reminder there. You go onto the app, you can get push notifications from the app. You go on the app and you see all the different other services that could potentially offer. Um, you've just got a lot more potential for upsell if you're using that more often than rather going onto the web service. So that's going to be key for uh, Hims in the future to carry on and growing that platform and see that the reviews have been very positive and also the adoption has been very good for that platform. Very good move from Hims. And let's not forget, Hims is definitely more targeted to the um, younger generation and it's more a B2C platform where I'd say TDOCs are more of a B2B platform. So it more been customer bases, younger younger customer base. The best way to do that is by having it in the app store um, and having the app and the younger generation in particular, mostly, you know, don't really, I would say, operate from a computer nowadays, potentially laptops, um, but especially in mobile phones. So having the app there is massive for adopting the market there that they're going for. So yeah, great move and seems like they're executing on that very good. Net loss, net loss is shrinking massive. So last year in this quarter, they did a 51 million net loss. It's now 16 million, which is incredibly dropping down. Um, so yeah, the fact that obviously a lot of that was to do with coming on the public side of it as well. Um, that was a few of the expenses. Um, but yeah, the losses are now shrinking down to a very good amount as well. So, you know, you talk about a company here that's growing massive amounts and is on the verge of pushing that profitability, which we'll talk about in a second. 94% gross margins, um, and it was down from 77%. So it was a little bit of a decrease, but 94% gross margins is fantastic. You know, that's gonna, having so high gross margins means that you will have the ability to definitely get towards good amounts of profit um, when you when they do want to scale on profit rather than not focusing on growing the business. Um, 74% gross margins is expected. Obviously, you've got a few issues on, in the world kind of going on right now, uh, but the main thing, the, poten the a lot of the reason why they'll potentially will see a bit of a shrink in the gross margins is because they've just gone from their online platform to actually being a bit of a wholesale seller you know, in a lot of retail locations. Um, and obviously generally, um, they don't generally have as good um, margins as a, a technology online platform. So that is expected to see drop, but still holding up very well at very good high rates. So yeah, fantastic. Um, new partnerships, um, I won't go through them through here at the moment, but there was a, quite a few, I think there were three partnerships that was announced in the Q1's earnings report, which is great. So obviously still extending the new partnerships and the partnerships they do have seem to be going very well. And let's not forget, you know, this is what's been happening so often. You know, if you go back to 2021, Hims was just coming out with new partnership after new partnership after new partnership. And they, the more these partnerships were, you know, coming on board, it, it was just sending the share price lower, but you were looking at it going, okay, if this new partnership's coming in, that's gonna add, you know, X amount of revenue to the company. And we're a year on since a lot of these partnerships started coming in and it's starting to show in the revenue from, not being rewarded on the share price front yet, but as more and more of these new partnerships in, it's just transferring into this and that keeps building up. So good to see them executing on the partnerships they have had in the last 12 months and the new ones coming in as well. Wholesale, up 300%. Now, this is a, obviously a low, this will be give, this will give them, you know, a bit lower margins, but the great thing with, low, uh, with wholesale is that they'll actually then have um, two income streams, which is great. You know, obviously a company that has more income streams is obviously a lot better. 
it's still growing at 300%, which is great. And the great thing what Hims want to do with the wholesale point of view is that if you say, let's say you're going to Walmart and you actually see the Hims, uh, Hims product in store, you're like, oh, Hims product, I, I, I've seen that business, I know it, they're selling in Walmart and it starts to be more of a recognized brand where you see it actually in a physical store and then you see this, oh, they actually offer a telehealth service online. Oh, I know them, they sell stuff in Walmart. They're a, you know, a company I know, I trust them a bit more because I know they've got physical products in Walmart. To sell products in Walmart, you've got to be a, you know, a trusted company. I'll go with them. And it's kind of like secret advertising that's going on, but as well as that, getting the brand out there and also increasing the sales. So it, it's, it's a great thing that's going on right now. So it might mean the gross margin has just dropped slightly, but what they get from the revenue point of view will still be good and what will transfer into profit. The advertising, the branding awareness is great and that's growing at 300%, which is really good. They also said that there's a lot of their newer categories growing at mass rapid rates. I think they said that they were all growing at like 300%. In particular, I think one of the ones that were mentioned was the mental health service that was growing very well, which is one of the new ones. It's, they said a lot of the new ones are ex executing fantastically, which is quite funny because we saw TDoc actually part their earnings. They said one of their weaknesses was the mental health service, whereas HIMS came out with a total opposite saying it's really strong. So it does seem like to me that Hims is now starting to get to the point of view where this is actually um, one of the companies that is taking market share, share away from someone of the likes of TDoc, which is great. And also they delivered this with um, no hit. You know, the company really had no hits on any point of view. In fact, all it is is hiking up the guidance and it was punished for it and it was stupid, but um, all it is is hiking up its future projections of what it's going to do. And, you know, this, it did it with, you know, no hit in the marketing side of it or any hits with app changes or inflation pressures and, you know, with people kind of opening back up, it said its business is even stronger than where it was during C the pre-CV and um, during CV. Um, you know, th this company is doing it in a time where so many companies are talking about this issue, this issue, this issue. Hims is just going, we haven't got any. We're just delivering absolutely amazing. And uh, another key thing that happened in this earnings report is, and also the conference call, is the P word was starting to be used a bit more. And the P word is profit. And um, yeah, the um, profit was starting to, the profit word was starting to get said, you know, you know, the path to profitability, starting to move into profit. And it's happening. The path to profitability is here because it's scaling up so quickly. There is reinvesting into, its, into the company and um, obviously taking market share, but it's growing that quick that they are having a lot of, uh, losses coming down now you know we move from 51 million down to a 16 million loss and if they carry on growing at the rates they are doing and um, obviously they, they're going to get to a break-even point of view and start ramping up that profitability and when you have a business here that is you know growing at 94 percent starts putting in good amounts of profitability i mean you know with gross margins of 74 percent if you're putting in 10 percent of profit margins in a, in a business like this, um, which they will do in the next five years, you start working out how quick they're growing this business and um, how much they keep hiking that up, you know, 400 million, um, you know, within the next few years, we could be on the path to, a, you know, a, a billion, um, you know, in revenue potentially. You start working out if they put a 10% profit margin on this sort of business and then you start looking at the valuation of where it's at right now and you're like, geez, this is, you know, what you're getting here for a business is a fantastic opportunity. So yeah, um, the earnings were fantastic. There was really no faults for them. And they once again over delivered. Um, frustrating on the share price front, but yeah, great set of earnings I thought from Hims, And uh, just kind of sums the market up that it just sold off after a new 52 close after such good earnings. But hey, that's what we're at at the moment. So yeah, um, one of those, that it's good. One of those that it's important to focus on the business and not the share price because the business is performing absolutely amazing. And sooner rather than later, that share price will follow this business 100%. So it's, uh, yeah, it's one of, definitely one of the ones that I've got a lot of high conviction on right now. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're on the Patreon, I will bring the exclusive video out tonight of a UK portfolio review. So do keep your eyes open for that. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in a bit.